Dear sisters and brothers, we welcome you to the live cast of this Mass for Wednesday of week 27 in Ordinary Time, the 7th of October, 2020. Today we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. Our entrance antiphon. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So today we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. At the same time, today is the anniversary of Archbishop Emeritus Nicholas Chia, his 19th anniversary as a bishop. So let us pray for his good health, and that God will bless him with peace and love and joy. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, May, through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, 
by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had ascended into heaven, the apostles went back to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. And there were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Jude son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. The response, the Almighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. My soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy his name. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. The Almighty works marvels for me, Holy is his name. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestors, David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with his shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what I have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary, the Church wants us to inculcate not just a love for Mary, but a love for the Rosary. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many Catholics who do pray the Rosary, but very often in a routine manner, without meaning what they are saying. And there are many more Catholics have given up on the Rosary simply because they find the Rosary routine, mechanical, repetitive. It does not seem to bring change into their life, does not seem to help them in their spiritual growth. And therefore, they find the rosary uninspiring. My dear brothers and sisters, if you have lost a devotion to Our Lady using the rosary, it is simply because you have not understood the mind of the church. In today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we are told that after Jesus ascended into heaven, they went back to Jerusalem. And there, in Jerusalem, they waited for the Holy Spirit. And who was there with the apostles and the disciples? Acts of the Apostles make it clear, Mary was there with them. And what were they doing? All this joy in continuous prayer. So two things we have to take note when we read today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Firstly, the important role of Mary in the early church. Secondly, they prayed unceasingly. With respect to the first, Mary's presence was very important because Mary was the mother of Jesus. And the disciples and apostles were discouraged. While waiting for the Holy Spirit, Mary was the one who gathered them together to pray. And of course, Mary was important for the early church because Mary is the only one who could truly unlock the mystery of Jesus, his life and his identity. Mary had been with Jesus for 30 years. The rest of them were only with Jesus for three years. And so we can be certain that Mary understood Jesus more than anyone else. Mary would have shared the life of Jesus for 30 years with her. And therefore, she would have known the mind, the feelings, the aspiration, the vision, the hope, of Jesus. That is why we find that in the gospel, Mary was at the very beginning of his ministry, at the wedding at Cana in Galilee, and she was also present at the end of his ministry when Jesus was hanging on the cross. From beginning to end, Mary was present. And Mary was present at the most significant moments in the life of Jesus. The other aspect Of the life of Jesus in his ministry, Mary was hardly mentioned, simply because the focus should be on our Lord and not on her. It was only in time of crisis, in times of uh, uh, significant moments, that Mary would reappear, as in the passion of our Lord. And so that is why Mary was important for the early church in order to give them the support and help them to understand Jesus more and more deeply. And secondly, we are told they pray unceasingly. How do they pray unceasingly? What do you think when the apostles and disciples, they gather with Mary, what were they praying? How did they pray? Certainly, they did not pray the rosary because the rosary was still not in existence, at least the way we are praying the rosary now. 
So don't think that, you know, they were praying the rosary. But they were actually praying the rosary, at least in spirit. Why do I say this? Firstly, when they gathered together as faithful Jews, what would they be using for their prayer book? The same as we use the liturgy of the hours, they would be using the Psalms to praise God. That was the prayer of the Jews, and this is the prayer of the church as well. Using the Psalms and scripture texts, in those days yet, you know, there was no New Testament yet written. There was only the Old Testament, and so they would refer to the Old Testament text. And you can imagine that as they were praying the Psalms vocally, they were also reading the scripture text to see how the scripture text were being fulfilled in the life of Jesus. But you don't expect them to pray uh, for 10 days continuously articulating the Psalms aloud. So you notice vocal prayer ultimately will lead to contemplative prayer. We cannot be praying aloud 24 hours a day. So the real prayer is from vocal to contemplative prayer. And in their contemplation, what would you think they would be doing? They would be mulling over the events of our Lord. And what were those events? The most recent events that they experienced was, of course, the resurrection. It was such an overwhelming, overpowering experience. They have never encountered the risen Lord. It was something beyond this world. And so they must be still thinking over all these um, appearances of our risen Lord. They were still fresh in their minds. And that is true. That is the reason why you notice that even in the scripture, the scriptures are written backwards. The book of Genesis is the first book chronologically in the Bible, but it was not the first book to be written. In fact, Genesis was written only in the 5th or 6th century. BC. And then even the Gospels, the Gospels were written backwards. That is to say, the first part of the Gospel was the resurrection, the passion narrative and the resurrection narrative. This was the first part of the Gospel. And then later on, then they put in the ministry of Jesus. After they put on the ministry of Jesus, then you have St. Luke and St. Matthew who put in the infancy narrative. And St. John would even extend to his pre-existence. You notice St. Mark, the first gospel to be written, there was no mention of the infancy narratives at all because it was still too early. They have not reached that stage of contemplation. And so we can imagine, therefore, that when the disciples were praying and contemplating, the first thing they did was to contemplate on the resurrection and his passion. What did it mean for Jesus to be raised from the dead? And remember, uh, Jesus in the, uh, Luke 24, the disciples of Amos, he says all these things happened in order to fulfill the scriptures. And so we can be very sure that they were thinking and contemplating to see how the passion, the death and the resurrection they are connected, revealing Jesus as truly the Son of God. And once that conviction was there, what else do they do? They move back. If Jesus was the Son of God, then they will start thinking back in his ministry. What did he do? What did he say? Why did he say such things? Then, of course, on hindsight, they begin to understand deeper all the teachings of Jesus, all his actions that they remember very often in the gospel, they did not understand then. So in the light of the resurrection, all these events of the life of the Lord make sense now as actually preparing them to accept Jesus as the Son of God. But that was so that was as far as they could go to the ministry of Jesus. But what about the first 30 years of his life? Very few would have known Jesus. Perhaps some of the cousins of Jesus could have told some childhood stories about the Lord. Only Mary. 
Mary, for 30 years, she was the only one who can fill the vacuum of the first 30 years, the hidden life of Jesus. And that is why Mary was with the apostles. I'm sure the, when, later on when the evangelists started writing the gospel, they would have interviewed Mary. Who was Jesus? What was he like when he was young? What did he do? And all these things, this is where we have the infancy narrative. Who knew what happened at the very beginning of the conception of Jesus? Only Mary knew. Only Mary was there with the angel. No one knew. So we can see and can understand why Mary was such an important figure. And so now, my dear brothers and sisters, that is why you notice that in the praying of the rosary, it is truly a great gift, huh? that God inspires St. John Paul II to add in the luminous mystery. You've got the first, we have the three, joyful, sorrowful, glorious mystery. And then Pope John Paul really, eh. Hey, but the ministry of Jesus was missing from infancy, rights to the passion and the resurrection and the glorious mystery. What happened to that three years of ministry? And this is where John Paul II added the luminous mystery. And so that's why now the rosary is complete. What is the rosary all about? It's a contemplation on the salvific mysteries of the life of Jesus and Mary's association with that salvific role. That is what the rosary is all about. It's always contemplating on how Jesus saved us. That is why the rosary is a miniature Bible. Even without the Bible, just the rosary captures all the significant events of our Lord. And it's for this reason too, you notice the church encouraged to pray the rosary either before Mass or after Mass. Well, what is the Mass all about? The Mass is also a celebration of the different mysteries of our Lord. At every Mass, every season of the year, it is always to bring out one important, significant, salvific event for our own application to life. And so if you pray the rosary before Mass, it helps us to prepare for the celebration of the Eucharist. If it's after the Eucharist, it helps us to further contemplate what we have celebrated. So the rosary is a beautiful prayer. So, my dear brothers and sisters, put on the mind of church, put on the mind of Mary, and you will find the rosary truly a great benefit in your life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Run, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed to these offerings we bring, and so honour the mysteries of your only begotten Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name, 
on this feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary, for by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim. Worship together with exhortation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save the Saviour of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, Peace I give to you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a warm sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself to be conceived in the womb of your mother, our blessed virgin Mary. You took flesh to in her, so that you be one with us, one for us. You become the presence of God in our midst, the Emmanuel. And Lord Jesus, not sufficient enough just to be a man, to die for us, to show us your Father's love and mercy, you have once again made yourself Humble yourself to be present in the bread and wine, in the Eucharist that we received. Again, your Emmanuel, you are present with us in a very real way. And though deprived of this opportunity to receive you sacramentally, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will give me the same grace that you have given to Mary while she conceived you in her heart before she conceived you in the flesh. So Lord Jesus, we too want to conceive you in our heart. Come to me, Lord Jesus, come to us with your Holy Spirit and fill us with your presence so that your spirit will take flesh in the way I live my life. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim this sacrament, the death and resurrection of your Son, so being made partakers in his suffering, we may also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We thank you, dear sisters and brothers, for worshipping with us today. Join us again tomorrow at noon.